I feel like okay. this is you cleaned out a van. No, that's my work bag. <laughs> I'm scared to look inside. <laughs> Hey and welcome back. I'm excited about today's video. We are doing a entranceway closet makeover with Stephanie. Stephanie is 75% a butterfly and 25% ladybug. So it's gonna be really fun to do this closet and combine those two styles together. There's some things that are controversial. There's many things that are controversial in this video, but I think one of the things is barn doors. You love them or you hate them, but in this case, you're gonna see why they don't work. And you're also gonna see some crazy stuff that we discover while decluttering this closet. So this is where we're gonna start decluttering. These are beautiful and so bad at the same time. <laughs> and the reason they suck so very hard is because you are visual, you have little kids. Right. And even if you weren't, you're a macro organizer, I'm going to guess you, this is, you never open this door. No. Because how can you, right? You're, you're, you've got your hands filled, you've got backpacks and purses. Absolutely. And so this is crazy pants. Forgotten. Forgotten. And this is great, but yes. it cuts your closet in half. Right. Right? And so what ends up happening is, and you've already said, you're kind of kicking things in, but most of the time it ends here. Yes. And on the stairs. The stairs. And on the banister. And on the banister. And on the counter. <laughs> And by the back door. <laughs> and it's all because of these doors that are super useless. So in an ideal world, what we would do is we would have doors that would open up. Right. And we would have storage on the inside of the door for hooks for backpacks on the inside of the door yes. and places to like hang wet mittens and all of right. that. So that's someday in the future. But you guys know what I say when we have a visual organizer. Why not just take the doors off? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the doors off. We're going to make this a functional, beautiful closet. Right but visual at the same time. It was really uncomfortable for me to suggest that the barn doors go because they're beautiful. These doors are so beautiful, but this is the thing. It's combining pretty and practical. And in this space, the doors are not practical at all. And I feel like this is something you might relate to, trying to find that balance. We want things to look a certain way, but we need it to function first and foremost. So that's gonna be the goal of this space. And honestly, it should be the goal of every space in your home, making it as functional and practical as possible. So already with the doors off, I feel like it's already more functional. It does. It seems like a bigger closet. It seems like a big, an actual closet sized closet, which um, you don't have a garage. No. No. So this is all the storage. It's like your mudroom. Everything. I see bike helmets. I see hockey things. And yes. there isn't really another place for that to go. So that being said, this is not an excess of stuff. No. With this being your only storage, it has to be your val valuable real estate. Yes. So we can't have things that you don't use all the time in here. We have to put it somewhere else. And you have to kind of push yourself to let go of things that you haven't worn in the last year. Right and that you wouldn't buy again. Yes, okay. So we're gonna just start by grabbing things, taking it out. Right off the bat, if you know it's like, why do I even have this? We're gonna put it in the donate pile. Okay. If you're like, I'm pretty sure I wanna keep this, we're gonna put it in the keep pile. Okay. Okay, and if it's trash, we're gonna put it in trash. Okay. Let's do this. Deal. Are these a keep? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna guess all the coats maybe are keep. Pretty much. I realize now my daughter is definitely out from that one. <laughs> oh, we found one to go. This is very strange. Okay, so they go over the vents and you put the mitts on them to dry. Okay. So they're like, you use this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I find it's, it's happening. What is this? No, what is this? It's a penis. It is a penis. I was going to say, this is a penis. Yep. <laughs> what is going in my um, uh, best things found category? <laughs> Blooper reel. Why? <laughs> um, <laughs> long story short, my husband's friend said, oh, I saw these penis heads or something, and my husband went and bought them online. So now they each have a penis head. <laughs> so I'm not really sure where to put it because I can't put it with Halloween because when he wants it, it needs to be <laughs> to keep, I guess. I found a bag of miscellaneous. I don't think we need this dirty I feel like okay. this is you cleaned out a van. No, that's my work bag. <laughs> I'm scared to look inside. Dog, do you have a dog? A chicken. <laughs> you have a pet chicken. <laughs> yes. That you take for walks. <laughs> my kids do. Sometimes they use the wagon. Okay. Okay, 
to be <laughs> There was so many weird things in this closet. Everything is in this closet. There was flooring, there was golf balls, there was soccer things, there was bike helmets, there was, if you name it, it was in this closet and maybe two of them. And it's a small closet. It was like a clown car. I was pulling out, we don't even, the penis head just, woo! It was a roller coaster for me. Absolutely hysterical. The craziest thing I found. I didn't even get on camera and I'm going to talk about that at the end so make sure you stay tuned for that end story but also can we talk about shoes 17 pairs of running shoes for just Stephanie's husband just he had 17 pairs of variations of different kinds of running shoes in this closet which is way too many <laughs> three pairs of running shoes or is like More and maybe one. like a grass cutting pair so four pairs of running shoes not including boots or sandals or anything like that but he Legit has a lot of running shoes. <laughs> so I would challenge him to let go of four or five pairs of shoes. Because just because he has a lot, if he really wants to keep them, I think he should keep them in the basement. Agreed. Only because this is your valuable real estate and it makes it hard for everyone else to put away their shoes. Agree. So now that the closet is completely empty, I'm actually putting everything back in. I know this is weird, but I'm leaving and coming back the next day to surprise Stephanie and make over her entire kitchen and this closet. And I don't want her living with mess in the meantime. So I'm putting it all back in. So tomorrow I'm gonna kick her out and reorganize it, bring her back and surprise her with her gorgeous makeover. So I'm gonna start with this closet because it honestly is the most important space in this entire main floor. They have two kids, they have a busy family, and this is their only closet on the entire main floor. And not only does it have to serve as a spot for coats and shoes, but anything that they're dropping, so purses, backpacks, mittens, it's doing a lot of things. And the doors were beautiful, but because the staircase is here, they wouldn't open all the way. I love barn doors when you can fully open it and expose the closet, but when you can't, it's basically cutting this in half and making this entire half of the closet completely useless. So we took them off, which is bold, but they are visual organizers, but they don't want to see all of this. And so I've got these beautiful solid bins that I'm going to label and we're going to put these on the shelves to hide away the things but still make it easy to access. And I'm gonna raise up these shelves so we can have some hooks here for the kids' coats. Loving the way that this closet turned out. We just took the doors off, which really maximized the space. And they have a lot of coats, but I put hooks down low for the kids so they could actually access them, which means we have space even for guests' coats now, which is nice. Breathing room in the closet. And below, there's a lot of shoes. They actually had more shoes than would fit on the shoe racks, and the shoes were in front of the closet on the floor. So I took the bottom shelf out and opted for two big baskets instead. These guys are macro organizers anyways. They're butterflies. So now they can just kick the shoes right into the baskets, the kids down low, and have lots of room now for mom and dad's shoes. On this side, above where we've hung the kids' coats, we now have spots for hats and mittens for the kids and mom and dad, all their sporting equipment and the work bags and the apocalypse bag up top. Car cleaning and all the extras are way up here, the seasonal stuff, everything fit in this closet and we have space. I absolutely love the way it turned out and I hope they like it too. It's crazy how neat it looks. <laughs> It's crazy no. that everything fit back in. That's what's, that's what's really crazy. But you know what? I feel like you're going to want doors, just knowing you. Yes. But I'm going to encourage you possibly to open them. To yes. go with opening ones. Because just putting the kids' stuff down here yes. frees up so much space. You have, look, your guests can I hang out. Oh, my gosh. Which is very exciting. And my kids can reach. And those baskets are so cute. you enjoyed this quick little makeover we actually weren't going to make this video we were just doing the kitchen the main floor so this was a little bonus but I thought I'd make a bonus video for you but the main attraction is coming up next 
the kitchen makeover, you do not want to miss Stephanie's butterfly kitchen makeover. So hit that subscribe button, like this video, and I'll see you there soon. Thank you so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. I get asked all the time, what's the strangest thing I've ever found in a house while decluttering and Stephanie's house wins. It wins by a lot. I, I, I don't have words for the things that I found in this closet. The penis head, hilarious. The chicken harness, but the strangest thing I found in this house, I didn't even get on camera. I don't know if I can articulate how strange I found this, so I'm just gonna try. It's a backpack, okay? It's a backpack, a just a normal looking backpack, but quite large, but empty feeling. And I was like, does this backpack have to stay in the closet? And Stephanie said, and I quote, it's my husband's emergency backpack. He has to have it at a reach for a moment's notice. What is this backpack for? A zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Maybe not a zombie apocalypse. It's his, in case he has to go survive in the wilderness for extended periods of time, emergency backpack. Does he camp? No. Does he hike in the wilderness? Also a no. This is just in case da, 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 zombies are attacking and he has to have this bag. So I'm curious to open this bag. Like what does one keep in a zombie apocalypse bag? Prepare yourself. This is important stuff. Okay, there is one giant blade, like, a, like an army knife, but like a, mm, I assume that's for chasing down and killing rabbits to eat, but there was no lighters or matches in the bag. So we're going raw. We're, we're on a raw diet in the zombie apocalypse. There was a straw that's apparently for sucking out of mud puddles. Like it's a survival straw that makes all water consumable, which I can see the importance of that. There's a bottle of sunscreen because you are not getting cancer, skin cancer during the zombie apocalypse. Nope, you can be eaten by bugs because there was no bug spray, but that sunscreen was in there. And drum roll, two Tums. Not a bottle of Tums, just two unwrapped Tums. I think they must have fallen out of the package and were just left in the bag, but that was it, my friends. No bandages, no nuts, no food. He didn't need water because he has a survival straw, but that was it in this zombie, a big zombie apocalypse bag that was at the door at a moment's notice, just in case. So if there ever is a zombie apocalypse, we're all heading over to Stephanie's house because they are prepared. I'll see you guys next time.